Julia. <laughs> Eugene. <laughs> Let's dig in. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions, and I know there are a few people in the audience that also want to ask you a couple questions. So let me start. Um, I was thinking about something, Julia, that you said um, that I want to ask you about. That that that, that there's a connection. That, that there's a connection between your your work. That that there's a there's a, a link between your films. And so I wonder if with Titan, were there seeds? Were there elements? Were there ideas for this film that began in Raw? Yeah. Yes and no. Um, so, usually, when you're in post-production for a film, it means that you've been um, working on that film for many years, uh, especially when you write it and direct it. And when I was in post-production for Raw, um, I was a bit uh, obviously tired, and uh, when I'm tired, I need to think about other ideas, other stories, in order to clear my mind a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I considered my film at the time, so raw, and I uh, realized that um, the love story that was between Justine and Adrien uh, in there uh, was a love story that I really enjoyed writing, that I enjoyed directing, um, because of its, um, let's say, um, his um, unconditional aspect, the fact that they love each other no matter what, no matter their gender, no matter the sexuality, but just because they need each other so bad in this context and they only had the other one to rely on, and that's all that matters. And I wondered why um, did I put love, this type of love aside in my story, which is a first-person film, obviously, about her emancipation uh, through monstrosity, and I realized at this moment that for me, love was a topic that was hard to tackle, that it was hard to talk about love for me. And, um, and I decided that um, I would do that for my second picture, that I would talk about love. I said this to, as a challenge to myself, if you will. So Raw has something to do, uh, obviously, um, with the, the genesis of, uh, of Titan. And talking about what you said about the, um, the fact that there is a continuity between my films, including my first short, actually, it is very true. It's like I like to think about my work as a, as a, the same gesture somehow. That I'm going deeper and deeper and deeper through the same gesture. I think it's a bit hard for me to um, actually um, consider my film with a, a, a beginning and an end, and then you move on to something completely different. Um, I, I prefer the idea that actually you can see in Titan, I prefer this idea of movement and of shedding skins somehow in order to get deeper and deeper to a form of truth. Mm. So at the center of this film, I'm not surprised to hear you talk about the center of the film being a story about love, and yet you build so many layers around it. it it's like an onion, we're peeling away so many layers to get to that. Um, the expression of love between these two characters mm -hmm. Um, tell me about the, the process of building those layers. Hmm. That comes in the, the writing, clearly. Yeah. Um, you're adding these, these components, these elements, these pieces. Yeah. Well, there are two things. It's like the first thing that for me, again, it's very natural um, to think in terms of um, movement, of transformation, of mutation. Uh, I have a very existentialist, appro exist existentialist oh my God, approach to life. That is, that you have to be many in order to be one. And then actually, um, you have to um, go through different metamorphoses in order to get closer to your essence. Doesn't mean that you will reach it, because actually, I don't think you can ever reach it. But the important thing is the tension towards it. It's the movement towards it. It's the journey towards it that makes it life, I think. Um, so um, you see, I see things like that. However, it hasn't been completely um, uh, natural for me at the beginning to, um, to build um, a film like Titan in the way it is now. For me now, I see, it, I see the film as an arrow. You see, I think as an ascending journey that is in just uh, one somehow direction. At the beginning, in the very early drafts, I had still clung on the academic structure in th three acts. Um, I realized after, I think, the third draft that this was not fit at all to my story. 
that this energy was not right for my story. And really talking about energy is essential to me because that's exactly what I try to do with Titan, it was, is to communicate this energy and to build up an experience that is at the same time, um, um, let's say, a corporeal or sensational, all about the sensation, um, and also very, very uh, emotional. Okay, one more question for you on this topic, and then I'm going to bring in your exceptional collaborators. Um, the image of the car is something that I understand is from a dream or somehow connected to a dream for you. How did the, how did the image of the car for you process into something that you could explore and add to the Actually, the, the idea of the car is consequential to a nightmare. That was definitely not a dream. Okay, it was definitely enough. a nightmare. <laughs> Tell me about that. <laughs> that was recurring for years. And that nightmare actually inspired the um, last scene of the film. Mm -hmm. And coincidentally, I actually, in my head, in the building up, building up of that story, I started with the end and I worked my way back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that nightmare um, was that I... Um, that I was uh, giving birth to um, car engine um, pieces, or parts, if you want. Parts of a car engine. Yeah, parts of a car engine, exactly. And, um, and there was something uh, absolutely, for me, uh, disturbing in it that c I couldn't pinpoint right away, but that having it and thinking about it, I realized that it was the collision between this um, act of life and this energy of life and this metal that was dead and cold. And this is obviously uh, something disturbing per se, but also what it says about, you know, um, somehow your psyche at that moment, what it says about yourself as well. So this helped me for the ending, also helped me for the building, building of Alexia's character. Mm -hmm. um, and also um, it led me to the car, obviously, because when you think at that ending, you think about night nightmare. I mean, where does, does that baby come from? The car. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> when you explain it, it all makes sense to me. And I mean that. <laughs> Thank you. Vincent, welcome back to the New York Film Festival. Good night. It's nice to see you. It's such a pleasure to watch this collaboration between the two of you that's expressed in this film. Tell me about the earliest conversations the two of you had, and your reaction to it. <laughs> I'm very when happy to it. answer to that question because it's the only one I can manage with my English. Okay. <laughs> um, I knew Julia since like eight or nine years, and uh, we had very often drinks together with a friend of mine, we, have a, we share a friend, and um, I never speak, I never spoke with Julia thinking about working, and I never saw her as a director, and as a big director she is now. And once we had a drink at the Café de Flore, it was one o'clock in the morning, we had like two or three um, glass of wine or whiskey, I don't know, or vodka. And she oh. went to the, to the bathroom and when she came down, it was my turn to go and we crossed in the restaurant and she just said to me, Vincent, I'm writing a script uh, thinking about you. So I, I went to the bathroom and then after, <laughs> I came back, I didn't speak about that with her, and in the morning, I call my friend and I say, you know, I like Julia, but it's a kind of joke I really don't ap appreciate. <laughs> we never do that to an actor or an actress, so just tell me, is it quite okay when she's drunk or not? <laughs> and he said, I know Julia, and, uh, but call her. So I called Julia at like, noon, and I said, um, excuse me, but yesterday, and she cut, she cut me and said, yes, I know what I say to you, and it's true. And I'm writing a script, and I'm thinking about you, and only about you, for the, for the man character, for sure. And then after, I wait, I've been waiting two years to get the script, 
And when I get the script, that's the first time in my life my, I didn't read the script with my brain. I read the script with my heart. And at the end of the script, I didn't know exactly what I like and why I want to do it. And I had a very bad reason. But sometimes bad reasons are good reasons. And I said to myself, I don't know why, but that character won't go to another actor in France. I have to do it. <laughs> it's impossible for me to see anyone else in that movie. So I'm going to say yes. And after, I will put the comma. And but tell me what you want of me. But I'm going to say yes. I can't say no. It's an animal reaction, not a brain reaction, and not with my. It's only with my heart. And then after all the problems started. <laughs> <laughs> She said to me, you have to work two years and a half, or two years to make uh, uh, a body, and uh, <laughs> I want you to cut your hair, and Vincent, I'll tell you, I know, because I spoke with directors, that sometimes you go and watch the combo with monitor. me. No, the what? The monitor. The monitor. With me, no monitor. So I said, no monitor, I have to do my body, what do I have to, uh, for me? And she said to me, nothing, you do it. I want you to lose control. And I think that it's one of my best experience in my life. And just then I, I finish with my answer. And I think that I needed to do that character because maybe the Vincent of the movie and the Vincent who is here tonight Uh, we have we share something, and I think all of you are like me. I don't want to die, <laughs> and uh, I would like. I uh, think I use the character to build my body to make me thinking that I'm not going to die, and I will be more young after the movie than before to do it. So I went through and I did it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. And thank you to Julia, and thank you to Agat. Agat. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Thank you. So, you get this message on Instagram. Yes that there's a movie you need to audition for yes. called Titan? No. It's just, hey, we want it. Hey, there's, uh, do you want to audition for a future film? A movie. Just a, a movie. movie, yeah, whatever. So just a message comes to you on Instagram. Yeah. And you're like... Yeah, at that point I was just like, yeah, I said yes to anything, basically. So I was just like, yeah, cool. I'll just come and audition for it. But I had no idea who the director was. I had no idea about the script. I had no idea about anything. But I was just like... Yeah, okay, let's do it. And four auditions later, four callbacks later, you're offered this role. Yes. Tell me about the conversations that you and Julia had as you were diving into this process and building this character and transforming. Which conversation <laughs> do you mean? Because <laughs> there was a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, at first, like, it was on the last round of audition, we had this, prior to doing the actual audition, we had the coffee together. Mm -hmm. And I remember, because at, at that point on, I knew that I, wa I really wanted that part badly. So I had written a little letter that I had in my pocket, just in case I couldn't express myself, you know, the way I wanted to say things to her. And we had this coffee, and I never had to take the letter out of my jacket because I managed to like talk to her about how I felt that this part made, made sense to me and how I felt that you know I should be the one doing it and uh, and then we did the last um, round and she called me two days later um, I was about to take a train to go to my dad's wedding in the south and she called me and she's like okay I'm calling you to tell you that um, Alexia is for you 
so you need to not you need not not to take the train right now. You need to go to projection straight away, and um, don't worry, you go tomorrow see your dad. And I was just like overjoyed and whatever, but that's not the question. Anyways, um, I no the, the conversations that we had were mostly about how we were gonna prepare for it mm -hmm. um, and how everything was gonna be because there was no room for improvisation, no room for like... <laughs> no room. <laughs> uh, and no room for um, chance, basically. So it was just like, she made it very clear that it's gonna be very physical. She made sure that I was gonna be uh, physically prepared because I trained a lot as well. Um, and she made sure that, you know, I was very aware that it was gonna be like long days, that it was gonna be physically very demanding, that it was um, gonna be, yeah, nudity, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, she said like everything that she said to me preparing the movie happened, there was no surprises, which was really securing and um, it yeah, that makes it very comfortable for me on set because I had no surprises. So, yeah. And what were those things in that letter or in, that, in your mind that made you, through this process, want this role so much? What, um, what did you most connect with and why did you want the role? Uh, so because much? going through, you have to bear in mind that I only read the scripts after I got the part. So I had no, like, I kind of knew what I was getting myself into, but not really. <laughs> I didn't know about the car thing at all. <laughs> didn't know. Um, but I knew at that point on, I knew that there was going to be a matter of physical transformation, that I had to be able to look like a guy at some point, and that it was going to be very physical. And those three things like, are the reason why I've always wanted to be an actress. Because it's like, and also she told me, also this character, there's no Agat in that character at all. And I was like, thank God, because I'm not interested in playing myself. Mm. I mean, I'm with myself all day. That's way enough. So I was just like, that's, that's the dream. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do this job for. And that's the act actual job of an actor. And this whole transformation process was very enriching and very, I don't know, that's exactly the reason why I wanted to do this job. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, I really want to get, we don't have a lot of time, but I really want to get at least two questions. So you're, you're asking about the combination of these unsettling images with the heart at the center. And I couldn't hear the last part of what you said. I couldn't hear the very last part of what you said. Speak. How you combine. No, it's a good question. How you combine these two? Yeah, darkness and light. I yep. mean, it's a very old story, you know. I think that mm, none of them can go without the other. I mean, it's there in, I think, all Renaissance painting, especially Caravaggio, which incidentally was a huge reference for me and my DP. Mm. Um, so for me, it's a very natural way of seeing things, you know, knowing that... Um, I, feel, I feel that my movie is pretty optimistic. For me, the end is really about Obviously, this unconditional love, it's all about this acceptance of these two beings together. It's about the birth of a new world, of a new humanity that is stronger because it's monstrous. So it's no, no longer an abnorm abnormality, but it's actually become something very positive for the child, the child that is born in love. And, um, and so knowing you know that again it's always like about balancing things you know when i would end like this that this was the feeling that i wanted to convey to my audience once they had finished the film the feeling i wanted you to leave the room with then again i have to start with something that is quite the opposite of it you know in order to make you feel that it, that that evolution so the opposite of that was a world that was very violent a character that was very very far away from her own humanity that was um very cold uh, and you know with, um, without any emotions and stuff like that and this is how she's actually um somehow um yeah um reborn through this uh, relationship that she has with Vincent uh, and that that gives her actually somehow uh, contours that she did not have before because for me before she's someone who's driven by her own impulses and only her impulses which makes her basically in walking death drive uh, and how Vincent by looking at her 
opposite to her biological father who did not look at her at all by looking at her somehow and by somehow um, being able to rely on each other because they are two very lonely people. That is how it gives her contour and keeps her, um, and puts her in touch with her humanity and, uh, and her emotions. So you see, for me, this is like when you think about it, this kind of transformative art, it's very clear to go from how darkness and light balance well together. And that's actually, again, with the light of the film, the light itself. This is really what we were aiming at with my uh, DP, Ruben Impens. Thank you. One, one more. I know we have to go. Um, question is about how you view humanity. You mentioned you, humanity. You mentioned in the beginning yeah, yeah, yeah. the notion of humanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that it's not really about giving a definition to it because I'm not too interested in giving answers. I don't think that arts should give any answer whatsoever. It should just raise more questions for that is that allow you to debate afterwards internally or with others. Um, for me, all my work since I started making even short movies is really about trying to, you know, um, first of all, trying to ask myself the question, what is it to be human? Um, it's also about like trying for me to broaden the, broaden the spectrum of what human we think what that humanity is, you know. Um, hence, obviously, the debunking of the gender stereotypes that there is in my film, and trying to somehow. Um, find as much empathy as I can for my characters, even if I don't understand, like uh, if I don't uh, relate to them sometimes, because obviously for me, Alexia was very hard to write at the beginning because she was pretty much unrelatable, but at least when you write someone that is unrelatable to you, you have got to understand that person. So you have got to find an entry point to where you can connect to that person somehow. Um, so you see, it's really just, yeah, about trying to, um, yeah, to, question what is it for us to be is it really like um is there humanity beyond the social construct i think this is pretty much the question that i ask myself constantly thank you we are i i just want to say just one, one thing on. uh, maybe julia is going to say something after and i get but after what we've been through during two years i want to tell you that it's the first time for us that we see so much people in the same room and it's really by the time who are going now with the, uh, all the platform and the series to see all those lovers of cinema in the same room at the same time, it's really, really fantastic. The final word from Vincent Landon. Thank you very much. The movie, Titan, is a neon release. Thank you to our friends at Neon. It opens in theaters this coming Friday. Thank you very much to our audience and to our guests. Thank you Thanks so much. Thank you.